We are talking about Saipan, I'm delighted to say. And the 20th anniversary, Jason McAteer and David Connolly are both with us. Gentlemen, good morning to you. No happier time do we as Irish football fans have than remembering uh, Saipan, Jason. I'm sure you're very happy to be with us. <laughs> you know that programme, um, what was it, Room 101? Yeah. Where you could, put th- you could put things that you didn't like into the locker and they were gone forever. Well, mine would be Saipan, the white suits. Uh, for Wembley and probably Roy Keane. Oh, Keane makes it all the way in. Right, you left the best bun to last there. So obviously, uh, you've you've uh, nailed your colours to the mast very quickly there, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, we've relived it a million times, and you know we're still going over it now. I, I know, like, and Dave's account of it will be different than mine. Twenty years on, I'm sure. Um, you know, we all recollect in different ways don't we and pick out the bits that we want to remember you know I I was you know I, I quite vividly know my story because I've told it a million times I'd be interested to know what Dave's is actually because um, I, I don't think I've heard Dave's but I'll, um, I'll sit and wait well, let's let's go. You, you've um, you've you've come in here. You've you've got your presenter hat on, asking the best questions, making us uh, feel a bit of shame. David Connolly, feel free to just answer Jason McAteer's question. How are you? Good morning to you. But go on, go for it. <laughs> morning, yeah, morning, guys. I mean, I look at uh, exactly like Jason. The reason is, I Jason probably hasn't heard is, and and even when I was asked to do this, I have the same feeling as Jason. You know, oh, come on, you know, it, it, it's it's tiresome. To, to go over it um, and you know maybe my account is is a little bit different but I, my account is, is is I guess pretty similar to everyone else's although um, I think in the Ireland squad at that time like players like Jason obviously were at the very you know competing on Roy's level and I, I was maybe not quite there so I would at times look up to players like Jason and Roy you know and I would probably give a lot of respect to those players, the, the the ones that operate at the very highest level, and probably, you know, I know Jason maybe might say he didn't, you know, have Roy whatever how Roy was, but I think I would, I would always try and look at those players and go, you know, right, okay, as a player, they had a, a lot of those players. Had, I had an awful lot of respect for them, um, and I think, you know, for Roy. <clears throat> I could, I guess, I'd, I had a sense of loyalty to Mick because Mick was really good to me. But I, I also had a respect for players like Roy or, or Jason, you know. And and I think, <clears throat> you know, for example, on the flight over, I sat next to Roy, and I remember when we got the plane <laughs> tickets. I remember we got the plane tickets. I was putting my luggage down, and I turned around, and all the lads were looking at me as if, you know. Ah, uh, you've got the short straw there. You know, sixteen hours <laughs> sitting next to Roy. But you know, <clears throat> in effect. In effect, you know, like Roy, as Jason would tell you, maybe, you know, Roy could be great company. He could be fabulous company, mm-hmm. very quick-witted. And and actually, you know, the flight sort of zoomed by. And also, you know, we shared the same sort of solicitor. Don't get me wrong. Our solicitor, Michael Kennedy, would often tell me, I remember he told me once after an Ireland game, Roy says we're carrying you. And, and you know, so, like, the, the respect what? was there, but... But but there was also there was also a go back go, sorry go back to that so Roy told Michael Kennedy <laughs> with the kind of express intention of him telling you Roy says we're carrying you no no not with the express intention but obviously I would talk to Michael like every week right and 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 you know you got to remember within the Ireland squad then there was probably you know at times you might be clinging on to a place in that squad you know because. You know, in terms of in what terms about of what about they, solicitor client do. privilege, where he's like breaking Roy's privilege? No, he, no, no. I think I think I think you took that. I think you took that because often the training pitch was a brutal place, right? right? If you can't hand, if you can't handle it, you shouldn't be there. You know. So it was Jason friendly advice. You, it was friendly advice. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. Jason would tell you all this about wrapping the ball into the front. You know, are they able to handle it? All this sort of stuff. But but cut a long story short, you know, I ended up uh, sort of being in the room next to Roy. Uh, but one, I think, but one. Um, and, and all these little things where, you know, you'd end up, it borrowed DVD or, 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 you know, there may be, Jason was at Liverpool, it was at United. There were, I guess the, it was different, you know, that's why probably the stories are different. I could understand Roy's perspective, but also have loyalty to Mick. It, it was, it was, I think it was difficult for, 
for some players of the squad to, 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 to be necessarily in one camp or the other. Do you get what I mean? I didn't agree with what Roy did. And ironically, uh, uh, Jason will probably tell this, but I was filming everything. Um, I saw yeah, yeah. a video. Well, maybe you, you, could make a, I... you could make millions out of that. We make a film. Well, th- th- exactly right. So I had been asked. So I was, you probably can't remember, Jason, but I mean, Kenny would film Trey. I don't know if you remember, Kenny was injured and, and I gave him the camcorder. And I was actually filming prior, we're up in the room before the meeting was called. And it was just the lads just messing around, training, playing cards, doing, you know, doing the usual, like the usual sort of stuff, just for a bit of a laugh, you know. And um, we put the camera down. And obviously, after the meeting, we're all kicked off. The same lads, I think it was Kevin Kilban, Shay, we all came back up into the same room. And they went, Don't you dare put that camera on. You know, I am not talking. And, you know, we were so close to, to sort of even having a camera because it used to come everywhere just for a bit of a, you know, just to you know, remember. I've got to be honest, 20 years later, I have not looked at it. I couldn't even tell you where the cameras are, where the, where the you know, the films are. But, <clears throat> you know, it was, um, it was time for me, obviously, just to remember. And it was a great occasion to, to make the squad and make the World Cup. But I guess from my recollection, it might be slightly different to Jay's, right? Because some players were, were, were you know, in direct... They might be coming up against Roy and kicking seven bells out of Roy, whereas maybe I wouldn't be because I was playing in a championship. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So you had a different relationship. As a matter of interest, did you all have uh, individual rooms or were you sharing rooms in Saipan? We all, as Jason told, we all shared, like, uh, uh, apart from Roy, probably. <laughs> but, apart from Roy, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all had our, our set roommates. And to be honest, that was one of the best things, probably after. I think we used to trash Jason's room or soak the bed or, you know, the usual stuff you do is... is as lads, you know, messing around. <laughs> uh, so I had the short straw. I, I ended up rooming with Steve Staunton. <laughs> uh, so I used to get good night's sleep every night once he started talking about his Liverpool career and that. And I was gone. I was away. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you know what he used to do? Seriously, he used to ring his dad and, like, be on the phone for hours and he'd be trying to get to sleep. And obviously the time difference didn't help. And he'd be ringing his dad for hours just talking about nothing. And I'd be like, Stan, any chance? You know, we're training in the morning and you know, just going to sleep. Yeah, I, just hey, Joe, I, 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 Joe, I thought Alan Kelly used to talk to his dog, didn't he? That's what I heard. I mean, <laughs> whether that's true. <laughs> There's a few of them. Roy used to do that. Um, yeah, I think, I think the thing as well, I think it does sound like a bit like a witch hunt when we always talk about it because it's an individual against the collective, isn't it? And we've all got our own opinions about whether it was right or wrong and... I think the bottom line is, I think as we grow older, we understand that, you know, Roy had a point. You know, what he was asking for or what he was demanding was to make things better, which obviously would, in his head, give us the opportunity to play better or to to be better or prepare better or whatever it may be. So it probably was the best intentions. It was just how it was managed. It was just how it was put over. Um, And you throw into the mix... You know, we'd, we'd had a drink, I think, before the flight out to Saipan. We were allowed to go out. So, you know, the flight then was long and tedious. Um, it was difficult. We then landed. So on top of that, you're tired. And then you know what you like when, you know, you're tired. You know, if it doesn't, if, it's, if things aren't going your way, then you get moody and you get narky. And, you know, he quickly, he quickly sort of fell off the cliff, really, in terms of where his head was. And he was rooming on his own, which I always think, I mean, they do it now, but I always think it's nice to have someone in the room to sound off to. I mean, Steve Staunton, I had a few moments in that campaign where, you know, I wanted to go home, I got injured and Steve Staunton taught me round, or I had a problem maybe with one of the lads. I had a problem with Kenny at one point. Steve Staunton calmed me down. So Roy didn't have that. Roy, Roy went to four walls where he just stewed and festered and went over the points over and over and over. And in the end, it's like a kettle. It just, it just went. It just blew up. And unfortunately, it was in a meeting with 24 lads um, and in front of the manager. So, um, you know, the outcome is, is what it was. And I think he, do, he does touch on that in the, the initial Irish Times interviews where he kind of does allude to the fact that he is quite isolated in his room, but there are positives and negatives from his own mindset. But David, not to, to, to labour on the, the flight too much, but Jason does point to the fact that, you know, that there was a couple of drinks had at the airport. Roy himself like was pissed off around a couple of leprechauns approaching him at the airport. He, he, he <laughs> was, that, that kettle had started to boil 
on that flight. So I'm interested, like, did you notice anything while sitting beside no, him on no. that flight? No, no. And look, I mean, uh, uh, a lot of the lads, I mean, I can't remember, say, having a drink, but a lot of the lads, you know, do, do, often the best players are the ones that could have a drink. And, and you know, but uh, I was certainly not one of them. I had to really, you know, I was a little bit different like that, you know. Um, I didn't notice Troy having anything. What, what I can recall is that we played a, a five-a-side when we got there. And and the goalkeepers, Jason would do a, a tell you this as well. The goalkeepers are, often they do individual work, right? You know, so they go off and um, you know do an extra bit of handling, etc. But but for Ireland, the key thing would be like at United, right, where they always played whatever seven aside, five aside. Because I noticed because when Roy took over at Sunderland, we would play a seven aside game every day, like every day, however many eight aside, you know, seven, it doesn't matter, you know, it would always be a small-sided game, right, with two goalkeepers and two goals. And there was a lot put on that game, like there would be in in Ireland, because, you know, again, Jason will it would tell you that we'd often have a vote at the end of training who was the worst the worst player. And, and a lot of it would hinge on that game at the end if someone, you know, was taken to the cleaners, if somebody missed an open goal, you know, they'd get voted for the worst player. Now, when we went to... Saipan, where we had a we had a a, a small sided game played, and we had to play it without goalkeepers, because the goalkeepers already worked themselves to the bone, and Packy had said that they weren't to play. Now I can completely understand why Roy lost lost sort of his mind over that, um, because that's the one thing you look forward to, right? When you're a player, is then mm-hmm. you do all the pre stuff, and then you come to the game, and you don't play the game, and yeah, you know, so it just so happened like when that kicked off, I remember being right there when it kicked off in the meeting room. I was sat next to Roy just by coincidence as you come in and sit down. So, <clears throat> but in a, in a lot of ways, it could have been avoided. Like it, it, it could have been avoided. The, the goalies should be ready to go and play in the game, you know, because after the goalies, they want to play in the game as well, right? They don't want to flog themselves to death. And we don't want to play with no goalkeepers. I can't even remember if we played with an outfielder in goal or we just used poles or... I, I can't recall, but I, I can recall that it, it kicked off and it was because we didn't have goalkeepers, so that added to it. Let's just play another clip from the Roy Keane DVD from later on in 2002. Again, uh, here he is on the beach in Portugal talking about uh, you guys, talking about his teammates. Uh, you'd be delighted to hear this, David and Jason. Have a listen. It's one or two players sitting in a press conference here, I know we couldn't believe it. And... Please, lads, you know. I can describe them. To sit there and to say what they said about me, hypocrites, you know, these lads. Cowards. Cowards sums them up, and I mean that. I will not go back on that. This DVD is recorded, I would say, weeks after Saipan, because it's in the summertime mm. when he's on holidays in Portugal, and he's not, obviously, he goes back training, and maybe it's a bit of injury, maybe there's a, a break later in the year, but it's literally in the immediate aftermath, probably while the World Cup is actually happening. Yeah, well, like he, I think, yeah. yeah, I think he says in the, the DVDs, like uh, such and such happened, uh, had to leave um, Saipan. Now I'm in Portugal, so it does feel as if it's very, very immediate afterwards. So, I, I'm not sure, like J- Jason, when do you first become aware of this DVD and what, and what he said in it? I didn't even know there was a DVD. Is this his own DVD? Yeah, yeah, Christmas, uh, Christmas, my side or what's it called? Um, uh, sorry, my story or something. As I see it. As I see it. Yeah. Oh, Jay, it must have gone in the stocking, Jay, that one, yeah? It must have gone in the Christmas <laughs> stocking. must have. I didn't even know there was a DVD. Oh, I'll have to watch that. Have a laugh. A DVD um, and a book. Wow. Um, yeah, I, it must have been done straight after. He's, he's obviously still fuming, isn't he? And he's, um, you know, he's obviously having a pop. I mean, we, we, do have, we do have a very similar it. clip from about three years ago where he says almost exactly the same thing. <laughs> so, <he's, laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's over it then, yeah. Exactly. Um yeah, I, I mean, I, I ended up doing the press conference. I can't believe I got even asked to do it. Um, I think it was me, Quinny, Stan, and I think maybe Alan Kelly might have done it. So it was the senior pros in the in the thing. I, I didn't have anything to add. I was just sort of there. I don't even know why I was asked to be honest. But I, I sat on the table, um, and Steve Staunton and Quinny, Quinny's a politician, and he just he sort of batted all the questions off really. Well, I, I felt, I felt there listening to it. He, he obviously felt a lack of support, didn't he? And like I said, 
you know, we can all sit there and, like Dave said, and point fingers at goalkeepers not training or the kit not arriving or not going to Saipan or not having a training pitch. But it is what it is. And sometimes you've just got to take it on the chin. And, you know, when I I used to come back to Anfield and I used to listen to the, the England stories about what they used to get given, the training facilities, how they prepare for games. And it was so far removed from what we what we had under Jack uh, and even Mick, you know, staying in the airport hotel, training on the training pitch where the planes were going over, you couldn't hear tactics being shouted or teams being selected. Um, you know, we weren't really given anything. You know, the kit was, you felt it was England's second kit because they were Umbro as well. You know, it was kind of hand-me-downs kind of thing. But I always felt that's what made us the, the set of lads that we were. It, it kind of brought us together. It was a, a good team spirit, a good harmony um, we had in the camp. Because of these moments, we'd laugh about it. We'd just get on with it. It kind of made us, made us. I think, the team we were, which was difficult to be, you know, collectively very strong. We'd look after each other. We'd run through brick walls for each other. And in turn, that produces results. On top of that, we had a, we had a sprinkling of world-class talents in Duffer and, and Robbie, and the rest were made up of very, very good players. And I think Roy, you know, coming from the Man United background with Sir Alex was probably, you know, very demanding for preparation and, you know, meticulous when it comes to, you know, to looking at things and doing things. And, and it obviously, it rubbed off on Roy. And plus the nature of what Roy was as a person, you know, himself, you know, he was, um, he demanded the best. And, and we've seen the best of him, you know, just before kickoff, where he would demand the best performances from everyone on the pitch. But off it, I mean, he was always going to clash with different personalities. We clashed. We clashed because of Liverpool, Man United. We clashed because we were the same age. We clashed because we were different personalities. It's it just what it was. I mean, I, I'm certainly not a coward. If he's alluding to me, I'm, I'm certainly not a coward. But um, did you? Am I not right I in saying know. you actually did call to his room afterwards? Yeah, I did, yeah, but it wasn't to ask him to stay. <laughs> He'd lent something off me, so <laughs> I wanted it back. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I think, I think, I we, I think you've told the story of what it was, Jason. I think it's OK. You can you can remind everybody who is unaware of what... He, he borrowed a film off me, so... <laughs> I, um, the English I Patient, I think, back. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's too early in the morning, Jason. It's only yeah. Um Yeah, so... I, I did knock on his door. And, and you know what? It was, and Dave will tell you, you're sitting in this room. I'd never experienced anything like that. I'd experienced fights individually in, play, in, the, in the training ground, in the dressing room. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd witnessed, you know, other things that go on in football behind the scenes uh, that you would raise an eyebrow now. But I'd, I'd never seen it go off just before a World Cup, you know, in a national team with all the players, staff, management, everyone there, where, you know, one player is, is screaming at the manager and the manager's shouting back. And it was just surreal. It was just absolutely surreal. And, and I don't think no one knew how to handle handle the situation. I mean, we talk about, oh, Mick should have done this and Roy should have done that and the players should have done this. It's one of them moments you don't know until you're in it. And it kind of, the dust settled within minutes. I remember Dean Kiley cracking a joke um, about playing midfield, it kind of, kind of settled everyone, and then we all went off to our rooms. And, and like Dave said, you know, it was, you know, they were all sitting around, shocked the younger players. But, I mean, they'd never witnessed it. So, for me, you know, I, I went into the room with Steve Staunton. We were talking about it, and you know, I knocked on his door, and Mick Bain was in there, trying to trying to sort it out with him. Um, and I, I honestly thought he'd be on the bus in the morning. I honestly thought he would be calmed down and. He'd come on the bus with a tail between his legs, but we left at, I think, nine or eight days, was it, in the morning, and that was it. It's gone. Well, that was done. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I think we're all worried about him going off with our DVDs because he had one of mine as well. So I had to knock on his door. <laughs> <laughs> I think I um, we're, mine back. we're worried about Blockbuster and a few fines. <laughs> <laughs> it's Like, Jason, you mentioned um, taking it on the chin. Uh, Taking it on the chin literally is something that, uh, I guess, uh, probably happened when you faced off against Roy at the start of the following season. And Dion was on with us a few minutes ago. I'm not sure, did he hear it? He was talking about that, uh, that homecoming for the Sunderland players when Manchester United were in town. 
and obviously yourself and and Roy got into a bit of a, a heated exchange during that match. Do, like, do you remember like what? what uh, sorry, yeah, the the, the sticking yeah, in your the book, right? Hands, uh, sticking yeah. in your book, yeah. Um, what like was that? Was everything that happened there clear for everybody to see? Was there anything that happened in the tunnel? What, what what's your recollection from from everything that happened on on that afternoon and and the spillover from Saipan? Well, I knew he was he was going round. Um, because obviously we joined up a couple of times and a few, few of the lads had had stories about him going to, I think Matty Holland, had, had, he'd been through Matty Holland, hadn't he, during a game, I don't know where it was, Charm or Ipswich, wherever Matty was. Um, I think Harty had got it as well in one game against Leeds. Um, so we knew he was on the warpath kind of thing. Um, anyway, his, his book had come out the, the, the week that we played Man United and it was a big game up at the stadium of light. You know, full house. You know, Man United coming to town is always a big occasion up there. And um, I went into the dressing room and one of the lads had put his book on my spec, on my towel and shorts. So, um, obviously, we were all laughing about it. And, and I actually got one of the kids who were on duty, um, dressing room duty, to go and wait outside the dressing room and get it signed. So, we went off and got it signed and come back. And... Um, Anyway, we, we put it down. Anyway, I, I don't remember anything apart from the incident, which was I was playing centre midfield. It kind of ball bounced. Nothing had really happened. Um, I think I'd just... They'd scored, and I think I'd just set... I'd run off him and, and got the equaliser. I, I kind of went around the keeper and, and played the ball in and saw Andre Flo, I think, had scored the goal uh, to equalise. And the, the stadium was up, and we were on top. And the ball bounced in the middle of the park, and he's knit round me and stuff. And we've, I've grabbed him. We've both gone to ground and just come together. And he was telling me what he was going to do to me. He was going to rip my head off. He was going to do that. I mean, he was, he'd gone. Like, the mist had, had come down, and he'd gone. And, uh, you know, in them situations, I'm, I'm, always, I'm quite good, actually. I'm quite, like, quite calm, but quite quick-witted. I don't know what it is. I think it's the scouse in me. And um, I kind of just was telling him, yeah, listen, I'll read about it in your next book. And I was like, yeah, write it all down. And I was gesturing, you know, to write it down. I was just goading him, to be honest. But the thing the thing is, is like Roy, Roy will do anything to win, anything to win, which is, you know, for me as an elite sportsman, I get it because I'd do anything to win. And you do, you do things differently, whether that's off the ball, you give someone a little dig or you wind them up. You know, with your mouth, with the banter, whatever it is to get an advantage. That's that's how it was back then, um, and it was no holds barred. By the way, I mean it was some of the things that were said were disgusting, but that's what that's what happened on the football pitch, and you know that's what you had to live with. So, you know, for me to try and you know wind him up and get the better of him, you know, was part of the game, and I always thought, you know, after the game we'd probably just shake hands over it, and it was kind of well done, mate. You know, you give your best, I give your best, and we move on from here. But you know, the incident happened. He, his his head come off. I mean, thank God Uriah Rennie, who was a black belt and classy at the time, was uh, was refereeing because I think he would have actually ripped my head off had he got near me. <laughs> but Uriah was standing in the middle of us, and then um, and then he kind of calmed down, and then the game was filtering out, and it was there was a corner, and it got cleared, and we were running out, and he just come past me, and he went bang, blindsided me, and elbowed me in the side of the head, and I kind of went down, but not like. You know, I never died or went went down. It was just more of a bit of a shock thing. And Beckham come over and a few of the lads come over and it all he just walked he knew straight away he'd been sent out. He just walked off straight away. Quinny Quinny tried to like go over and put his arm around him and I don't know what Quinny was up to. Maybe he had a DVD he wanted back, I don't know. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh he 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 went off and then the next day uh the News of the Whale rang me and offered me a, a few quid actually to do a big story on him. And I declined the offer because it wasn't, you know, it, it was it was wasn't between enough. me and Roy. It was to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you know, I I thought we would we would kind of shake on it, and you know, time as a good heel of it as it is would, would kind of settle it all down. But you know, we <laughs> that that incident and the way we are together is is still the same today. It's still the same today. It's you know, we, there's no love lost. You've, have you seen uh, him since? You know, Was there ever a... Uh, loads, yeah, loads of times. Bumped into him on a plane. I've held the door open for him at Wembley. I've seen him in a restaurant about three or four months ago. Right. He was on a table, like three three tables down from me with his family. He didn't bat an eyelid. And, yeah, you know, 
it's up to him. If he wants to hold it for the rest of his life, then that's, that's, that's you know, I, I can't change his mind. It's up to him. But, but, you know, what I would say is, you know, if I've done anything to upset him, I apologise. Um, you know, but I'm 50 years of age now. I, I don't need to be worrying whether Roy Keane's going to send me a, a, a Christmas card or a birthday card. But it is what it is. Um, David, last one for you. The, when you went to get your DVD back, was there a conversation or was it like cursory, straight in, straight out? No, no, no. No, no, there, there was a conversation, um, <clears throat> you know, but <clears throat> I think I went with uh, with Gary Breen and he was like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, and my mind's made up and I'm I'm done. So you did, um, you did actually try and talk him out, out of it or like some kind of, uh, here, listen, you know, maybe this could all be smoothed over? Yeah, n- n- you wouldn't say, t- you know, you we're not we're all we're not idiots you know you're not going to talk someone around an an elite performer one of the best players in the world you know who who has done something you you know you you're not stupid enough to think you're going to change his mind you know but but because we're so close like i said i think we're next door and um uh, but you you just knew that wasn't going to be you know that 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 wasn't really going to going to change um and you don't become the player that you know that he was or Jason or you don't get to any of these levels if unless you've got that self belief and and that will to win and and hunger and desire which kind of at times can spill over you don't get that you can't I guess for Royce or any so a lot of players switch it on and off right you are who you are and uh, if he didn't have that he might not be the pl- well he probably wouldn't be the player that he was yeah so you you kind yeah. of it's it you know you, you and in some ways. I respect his position in not changing. I also respect Jason's in terms of Jason was pretty vocal. Um, it doesn't, you know, uh, and his, they both had their sort of line in the sand. And I think as ironically, I think Roy would respect Jason a lot for sticking with his, his belief, his opinion on, no, you were right. Like Roy thinks he was right. And, and I guess that's where, that's where we are in all this, you know, so. I think that is exactly where we are in all this is that um it 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 did happen and uh the fallout was the fallout but nobody's ever going to really change their mind about it and there's no point in really getting it but it is definitely interesting to kind of see it's this massive hinge point in in Irish football thanks to both of you for being um for being on the show this morning because I when we were talking about doing this I was like do we have to do we really have to talk about this again uh yeah. hopefully this is the last time ever or maybe it just becomes um until Comedy. the 21st anniversary. Comedy stick. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all get together. I'll buy that. We all That's have exactly party. what we should do. We should go back to Saipan and, and you can all react, yeah, react, relive it. reenact it. Yeah, It can be the dramatic uh, reconstruction for um, the movie that uh, David's making. <laughs> Not wrong, mate. Can I, can I play myself in it, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the Botox there. these days, right. Jason, is miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I'd love to see them tapes. I'd love to see it. Well, what, you know, yeah, what, the, what are you yeah, going to do with quickly. them, David? I'm going to make you an offer right now. What are you going to do with them? We will definitely well, produce that documentary for you. Yeah, I've had. I, ironically, I've had a few offers. You know, um, if I can, if I, they are in the loft, and not of my house, but of my parents, um, and and you know they passed away, so that will be. I will be going up in that loft at some point in the near future, digging those tapes out, and uh, we'll see what they're like. You know, they're probably there's probably not a camcorder that can play them. You know, so long ago. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> we'll we'll find one somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do, you, do you still have the DVDs that you lent Roy Keane as well? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, that the good job blockbuster went bust. You know, so <laughs> that's why. <laughs> so you'd to. Right, yeah. good stuff. Thanks a million, folks. Cheers. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thanks, boys. Take Take care. Care. Cheers. Right.